welcome to the Authors Lighthouse podcast, helping writers and emerging authors navigate the choppy waters of publishing. I'm your host, Karen Schober, indie author and author consultant. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Authors Lighthouse podcast. In today's episode, we're going to talk about having a well-crafted elevator pitch for your book. If you're not familiar with what an elevator pitch is, it's essentially a brief summary of your book that you can deliver in the time it takes to ride an elevator, hence the name. It's a concise and engaging description of your book that captures the attention of agents, publishers, and readers, and convinces them to take a closer look. Today's episode, we're going to explore why having an elevator pitch is important for authors, and I'll give you some tips on how to craft one that will help you stand out in a crowded market. So let's get started. First of all, what is an elevator pitch? Like I said uh, just before, an elevator pitch is a brief, persuasive speech that summarizes the essence of your book. Now, don't worry, this isn't public speaking. Well, it is public speaking, but this is your pitch for your book. It's called the elevator pitch because it is meant to be delivered in the time it takes to ride an elevator, typically between 30 and 30 seconds to two minutes. You should be able to explain your book's premise and hook the listener's interest in that short amount of time. This can apply to almost anything, not just your book. It could be a service or an idea or even all about you. And as an author, it doesn't hurt to have an elevator pitch about you when someone asks about you and your background. An elevator pitch is a critical tool for authors, especially when trying to get your book noticed by agents, publishers, or readers. With so many books being published each year, it is essential to have that concise and engaging description of your book that can quickly communicate its unique value and why someone should read it. It's a chance to make a great first impression and stand out from the crowd. An elevator pitch should be easy to understand, memorable, and engaging. It is not just summarizing the book, but it's also about creating the excitement and general interest. Your pitch should include the following components. First of all, the hook, or that attention-grabbing statement that captures the listener's interest and makes them want to hear more. Followed by a brief summary of the book's premise that conveys what it's about in a clear and concise way. Uh, You can also include comparable stories, books, or movies to help this as well. You wanna make a statement about what makes your book unique from other books in the genre and a call to action that encourages the listener to read the book and learn more about it. Crafting an effective elevator pitch takes time and practice. You need to condense your book's premise into just a few sentences while still conveying its unique value and hooking the listener's interest. It is challenging, but mastering the art of the elevator pitch can make a significant difference in your writing career. In the publishing industry, the elevator pitch is a critical tool for authors when pitching their books to agents, publishers, or to readers. When submitting a manuscript to an agent or publisher, it is common to include a query letter that includes an elevator pitch for the book. The pitch serves as a quick summary for the book, and it should catch that agent or publisher's attention and convince them to want more and request a full manuscript. Agents and publishers receive hundreds of submissions every week So having a strong elevator pitch can make your book stand out from the crowd. This is your chance to make a great first impression and get your foot in the door. Even if you're not submitting to an agent or publisher, having an elevator pitch is still important for authors. When meeting with someone at a conference or networking event, being able to pitch your book in a clear and interesting way can help generate interest and make a lasting impression, hopefully leading to book sales. An elevator pitch can also be used when marketing to your your book to readers. 
when promoting your book on social media or in interviews, being able to succinctly convey what your book is about and why it's worth reading can help attract potential readers and drive sales. Besides using it in a pitch for agents or publishers, it can also help you refine your book's concept and focus. Crafting a concise and interesting pitch requires you to distill the essence of your book and identify its unique approach. By doing so, you actually gain a deeper understanding of what makes your book special and why readers should care. And if you can't figure that out, then maybe you need to go back and edit the book to find that thing that makes your book special and why readers should care. Having an elevator pitch can help you stay on track when writing your book. Knowing the key themes and messages you want to convey can help you focus your writing and ensure that every scene and character has a purpose. So writing an elevator pitch even before the book is finished can be very helpful in the writing process. And finally, an elevator pitch can also help you establish your author brand. By crafting a pitch that captures the essence of your writing style and genre, you can create a consistent message that resonates with readers and helps build your fan base. This can lead to increased recognition and sales, as well as opportunities for future book deals and speaking engagements. So having an elevator pitch as an author is incredibly important for several reasons. It helps you stand out. In today's crowded publishing industry, having an elevator pitch that effectively communicates the essence of your book can help you stand out from the competition. It's a chance to make a first grade impression and generate interest in your book. It also makes you look like a professional. It focuses you to focus. <laughs> Crafting an elevator pitch requires you to distill the essence of your book down to its core elements. By doing so, you gain a deeper understanding of what your book is really about and what makes it unique. It's useful for pitching to agents and publishers, uh, including the elevator pitch in your query letter, can help grab their attention and make them want to request that full manuscript. And of course, it's useful in networking, uh, be it at a conference, workshop, or a networking event, or even a book fair. Being able to pitch your book in a clear and compelling way can help generate interest and make a lasting impression as a professional in the industry. Even if you're writing fiction, you can still be a professional in the industry. And it is useful in the marketing. When promoting your book on social media or in interviews, having that elevator pitch handy and well-practiced can help you succinctly convey what your book is about and why it's worth reading, which can help attract potential readers and drive sales. Having an elevator pitch is essential for any author who wants to stand out in, a crowd, in the crowded market, pitch their books to agents and publishers, and market their books to readers. It is a critical tool for the publishing industry. So here are a few examples of successful pitches that helped authors get published. So The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. Harvard symbologist Robert Langdon must un unravel a cryptic code in order to solve a murder and uncover a conspiracy that goes all the way back to the days of Jesus and Mary Magdalene. That's one sentence, by the way. This pitch is effective because it succinctly conveys the unique premise of the book and its high stakes plot. The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. In a dystopian future, Teenagers are forced to compete in a tele televised death match. When her sister is chosen to take part, Katniss Everdeen volunteers to take in her place, only to find herself in a fight for survival against some of the most deadly opponents imaginable. This pitch is effective because it captures the unique world building and high stakes conflict of the book, as well as its strong protagonist. Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. On their fifth wedding anniversary, Amy Dunn disappears, and all signs point to her husband, Nick, as the prime suspect. As Nick tries to clear his name and find his wife, he uncovers a web of lies and secrets that threaten to destroy 
everything he holds dear. This pitch is effective because it sets up the mystery and the conf conflict, as well as the complex and morally ambiguous protagonist. All of these examples, the pitch effectively conveys that unique premise, conflict, and stakes of the book, while also setting up a hook that makes the listener want to know more. These pictures are clear, concise, and engaging, which makes them effective in capturing the attention of agents, publishers, and readers alike. So how do you craft an elevator pitch? Like I said, a good elevator pitch should be clear, concise, and engaging while conveying the unique value of your book. And here are the key elements to making a good elevator pitch. First of all, the hook. Your elevator pitch should start with the hook that grabs the listener's attention and makes them want to know more. This could be a provocative statement, a question, or a brief summary of the central conflict. It should have a clear premise. It should be clear and succinctly conveyed to the premise of the book. This should include the genre, setting, and the main characters. And then a unique value proposition. Your elevator pitch should have highlighted the unique value proposition of your book. What sets it apart from other books in the same genre? This could be a unique twist on a familiar trope, a fresh take on a well-known concept, or a unique perspective or voice. High stakes. Your elevator pitch should also convey a high stakes of your book. What is at stake if the protagonist fails to achieve their goal or overcome the central conflict? This, this could be the survival of a character, the fate of a community, or the future of the nation. And emotional resonance. Finally, your elevator pitch should invoke an emotional response in the listener. Whether it's fear, excitement, empathy, the listener should feel in invested in the story and want to know more. By using these key elements in your elevator pitch, you can create a pitch that is effective and communicates the essence of your book, captures the listener's attentions, and makes them want to know more. So here are a couple tips on how to create an effective elevator pitch, now that we know the theory behind it. First of all, start with the hook. As mentioned earlier, starting with the hook can help grab the listener's attention and make them want to know more. Consider starting with a provocative statement, question, or brief summary around the central conflict. This can also be used in other marketing efforts like creating an Amazon ad. You wanna keep it concise. Your pitch should be short and sweet, no longer than a minute. You wanna avoid including unnecessary details or subplots. Focus on just the core elements of your story. Know your audience. When crafting your pitch, consider who you are pitching it to. If you're pitching it to an agent or publisher, focus on the elements of your story that will appeal to them, such as the marketability or commercial potential. If you're pitching to readers, focus on the elements that will make them want to read your book, such as an intriguing premise or relatable characters. Practice, practice, and practice. The more you practice your pitch, the more comfortable and confident you'll become in delivering it. Practice in front of a mirror or with a friend and be open to feedback and constructive criticism to improve it. And be authentic. Finally, just be yourself and use your voice. Your pitch should reflect your unique perspective and style, so don't be afraid to inject a little personality into your pitch. By following these couple tips, you can create an effective elevator pitch that effectively communicates the essence of your book captures the listener's attention, and makes them want to know more. So we, I gave you some examples of some very famous books, but what about different genres? So here's an example. In romance, when a successful businesswoman returns to her hometown to take over the family farm, she finds herself at odds with a ruggedly handsome cowboy next door. As they work together to save the farm from financial ruin, they discover a mutual attraction that could change everything. 
for a thriller when a young journalist uncovers a conspiracy involving a powerful corporation, she becomes the target of a deadly game of cat and mouse. With the help of a rogue FBI agent, she must fight to expose the truth and stay alive. Science fiction. In a future where humans have colonized Mars, a young engineer discovers a mysterious signal that could change everything. But as she embarks on a dangerous mission to investigate, she uncovers a shocking conspiracy that threatens to destroy the fragile balance of power on the red planet. Fantasy. In a land ruled by magic, a young orphan discovers she possesses a rare and powerful gift that makes her the target of a ruthless ruler. With the help of a band of rebels, she must navigate a dangerous world of magic and politics to overthrow the tyrant and restore balance to the kingdom. And finally, memoir. In her powerful memoir, a former addict shares her journey from rock bottom to redemption. With unflinching honesty, she explores the pain and trauma that led her to addiction and the hard-won lessons and community that helped her find a new path. By using these examples as inspiration, you can also craft an elevator pitch that is effect that effectively conveys the essence of your story, captures the listener's attention, regardless of the genre. So now that we know, in theory, how to make an elevator pitch, there are some mistakes that are very common that we want to avoid. You don't want to be too vague. Being One of the biggest mistakes an author can make is being too vague or general in your pitch. It is important to give enough information to capture the listener's interest without overwhelming them with details, but too little information can make your pitch seem generic and uninteresting. On the other end, you have too many details. <laughs> Including too many details or subplots in your pitch can be overwhelming and confusing. Your pitch should focus on the core elements of your story and central conflict. Not knowing your audience. Another common mistake is not tailoring your pitch to your audience. Whether you're pitching an agent, publisher, or reader, it is important to know what they are looking for and what will appeal to them. Being too long, your elevator pitch should be short and sweet, no longer than a minute. If you ramble on or go off onto tangents, you risk losing their interest and lacking a hook. A strong hook is essential to capturing the listener's attention and making them want to know more. Without a hook, your pitch may come across as dry or unremarkable. By avoiding these common mistakes and focusing on the key elements of an effective elevator pitch, you can create a pitch that effectively conveys the essence of your story and in turn captures the listener's attention. So here's a couple more tips on avoiding these common mistakes. First of all, practice, practice, practice. The more you practice your pitch, the more confident and polished you'll become. Try practicing in front of a mirror with, with friends or in front of a camera to define your delivery. Focus on those essentials of the story, those core elements of the story and the central conflict. Avoid including unnecessary details or subplots that can confuse, overwhelm, or even bore your listeners. Know your audience and tailor it to their needs and interests. This will help you craft a pitch that resonates with them and increases your chances of success. It's okay to have two different pitches, one for readers and one for publishers. Remember to use vivid language and imagery. To make your pitch more engaging and memorable, use vivid language and imagery to help the listener visualize your story and get them into it before they even crack the cover. And remember to start with that hook. A powerful hook that captures the listener's attention makes them want to know more right away. This can be a question, a surprising fact, or a powerful statement that hooks them in. 
And remember to keep it short and sweet, less than a minute. Be concise and to the point. Focus on your key elements and avoid tangents or unnecessary details. So using these tips and practicing your pitch regularly, not just get it right once, practice it regularly. You can avoid common mistakes and craft a pitch that effectively conveys the essence of your story and capture a listener or reader. So I said that practicing is important and it is actually essential to the success. Just like any other skill, the more you practice, the better you become. Practicing your pitch allows you to refine your delivery, focus on your key points, and improve your confidence. You may have the best pitch ever written, but if you can't deliver it with confidence, it's not worth it. You want to practice your pitch to allow you to identify areas that are in need of improvement, such as where you tend to ramble, speak too quickly, or become nervous. By identifying these areas and working on them, you can deliver a more polished and effective pitch. It can also, practicing also helps you adjust to different situations and audiences. Each audience is unique, so you may need to tailor your pitch to different situations. Practicing your pitch will allow you to experiment with different approaches and determine what works best for each audience. And practicing your pitch is crucial to success. By practicing regularly, you can refine your delivery, improve your confidence, and adjust your pitch as needed. This will increase your chances of success when you deliver your pitch in the real world. Besides improving your delivery, confidence, and tailoring of your pitch to different audiences, practicing your pitch can also help you. It helps you clarify your message, uh, you'll have a better understanding of the message that you're trying to convey. And this can help clarify your message that makes sure that it's clear and concise. You can also identify weaknesses in your story. Practicing your pitch can help you identify those weaknesses. As you practice, you might notice areas of your story that are unclear or lacks impact. And this can help you make adjustments to your story before you pitch it. And writing your pitch before the book is finished, you can go back and edit your story if necessary. You need to prepare for questions. Uh, practicing your pitch can help you anticipate questions that you may receive from audience. This can help you prepare thoughtful answers and make sure you're able to address any concern you may, they may have. Of course, practicing is going to help you build your confidence. By practicing your pitch, you build confidence in your ability to deliver it effectively. This can help you feel more comfortable and poised when you deliver it in the real world situations. So practicing your pitch is essential to its success. By practicing regularly, you can refine your delivery, improve your confidence, clarify your message, and identify weaknesses in your story prepare for questions, and build your confidence. These benefits will help you deliver a more effective and impactful pitch. So how do we practice? I recommend practicing in front of a mirror because it allows you to see your facial expressions, body, languages, body language, and gestures. This can help you identify areas where you need to improve and make adjustments accordingly. Record yourself. When you record yourself practicing your pitch, you can help elevate your delivery and identify areas you need to improve. It can also help you get used to the sound of your own voice, which can be a source of discomfort for a lot of people, myself included. And if you like what you've recorded, then you can use that as content for social media. Practice with a timer. Set a timer for one minute and practice your pitch within the time frame. This will help you get comfortable with the pace of your delivery and ensure that your pitch is concise and to the point. But also make sure that you're not going too fast. You want to practice with a friend. Pra practice your pitch with a friend or family member and ask for feedback. 
This can help you identify areas where you need to improve and get comfortable delivering your pitch in front of others. And they also will have a unique perspective and their advice can really, really be helpful. And then of course, practice in different settings. Practicing your pitch in different settings, such as a quiet room, a crowded coffee shop, or while walking. This can help you adjust to different environments and become more com comfortable delivering your pitch in any situation. Remember, the key is to get comfortable with your pitch and you do that with practice. The more you practice, the more confident and polished you'll become. And remember to experiment with different practice techniques until you find what works best for you. So today we discussed the importance of having the elevator pitch as an author. And I gave you a couple tips on how to craft an effective pitch. We covered the elevator pitch, it being a concise and interesting summary of your book delivered in the time it takes to ride an elevator. It is important to have an elevator pitch as an author because it can help you attract the attention of agents, editors, and readers, and communicate the essence of your book quickly and effectively. The key element of a good elevator pitch is a clear and concise summary of your book, a hook that grabs the listener's attention, and a call to action. To craft an effective pitch, focus on the unique aspects of your book, tailor your pitch to your audience, and practice, practice, practice your delivery. Uh, we have some examples of elevator pitches of different genres, including romance, mystery, science fiction, and elevator pitches of some very famous books. We also discuss common mistakes authors make when crafting an elevator pitch, such as being too vague or too complex, and tips on how to avoid these mistakes. And lastly, we emphasize the importance of practicing your pitch to refine your delivery, clarify your message, and build confidence. Overall, crafting an effective elevator pitch is essential to capturing the attention of agents, editors, and readers, and promote your book successfully. By following these tips and strategies that we discussed, you can create a pitch that stands out and effectively communicate the essence of your book. Crafting an elevator pitch takes time and effort but it can be incredibly rewarding for your writing career. So if you're an author, I highly encourage you to work on your elevator pitch today. Think about the unique aspects of your book, the message you want to convey, and the audience you're targeting. Then start crafting your pitch and practice it regularly. Remember, the more you practice, the more confident and comfortable you'll become. Try different techniques to refine your delivery, such as recording yourself, practicing in front of a mirror, or practicing with a friend. With enough practice, your pitch will become polished and persuasive, and you'll be ready to seize any opportunity to promote your book. So don't wait any longer. Start crafting your elevator pitch today and put the time and effort it takes to make it great. You will be glad you did. I know what I'm going to be doing later today, working on my elevator pitches, that's for sure. This show is brought to you by my book, Hollywood Hearts, The Second Act, now up on Amazon and in Kindle Unlimited. Beth Edwards didn't think her book would be anything more than her scribblings in a notebook. Never in her wildest dreams would she have thought that her book would become a blockbuster success and a Hollywood came calling. Life would never be the same for Beth and her young family as they headed to Hollywood to oversee production. Robert Cobb, the seasoned actor, had wanted to be involved in the project since he had seen Beth on TV promoting her book. He was amazed at who Beth was. As their characters fall for each other on the screen, they are both confused with what they are feeling off screen. Will true love happen when the director calls out cut, that's a wrap? You like behind the scenes of Hollywood and the romance of meeting and falling for one of your TV crushes, Hollywood Hearts, the second act, a contemporary feel-good romance will capture your heart. Find it on Amazon, a Kindle Unlimited exclusive.
This week's news, Kobo Plus in the U.S. As an author or publisher, you're always looking for new ways to reach more readers and generate revenue. With the recent launch of Kobo Plus in the U.S., you now have a new platform to achieve both goals. Kobo Plus is part of Kobo, which is owned by Rakuten, and it's an all-you-can-read subscription service that gives readers unlimited access to over 6 million ebooks, audiobooks, and graphic novels. It's kind of like Kindle Unlimited, but it's Kobo's. Uh, for a flat monthly fee, the readers can browse and borrow from the vast selection of titles, including bestsellers, classic novels, and niche titles. One of the, mo one of the major advantages of Kobo Plus for authors and publishers is the wide reach. Kobo has a significant presence in several countries, including the Netherlands, Belgium, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, where Kobo Plus has already been rolled out and has been deemed successful. With the launch of Kobo Plus here in the U.S., you, your book can now reach even more readers, helping you expand your audience and increase your revenue. Multiple streams of revenue! Uh, Kobo Plus also operates a revenue sharing model. So authors and publishers can receive a share of the revenue generated by this service based on the number of times their titles are borrowed. This model provides an additional source of income for authors and publishers, as well as the opportunity to reach those new readers who may not have discovered their book otherwise. This is much like the subscription model of Kindle Unlimited with one major difference, big difference for authors. With uh, Kobo Plus, there is no restriction to be exclusive to enroll your book in Kobo Plus. Uh, if you want to be in Kindle Unlimited, your ebook must be exclusive, meaning you cannot have it for sale or give it away anywhere on the internet. And they do look. Can, with Kobo Plus, they are fine with you being wide. Uh, the cool thing is, Kobo Plus does offer a three-day, 30-day rather, trial membership for new subscribers, which allows readers to explore the service and discover new titles with no upfront costs. Uh, this trial period, free trial period, is an excellent opportunity for you to reach the new readers and increase your visibility. I've known about Kobo Plus for a while, and I've been waiting for it to be available here in the U.S. Since most of Kobo sales are overseas and in countries that read more ebooks, I knew it was only a matter of time for it to be available here if, it tests, if testing proved successful, and it did. Kobo Plus is an excellent platform for authors and publishers just to reach more readers and generate revenue. With its wide reach, revenue sharing model, and the author's ability to keep the book published wide, it provides an additional source of income and opportunity to expand your audience. And everyone can take advantage of that 30-day free trial to see how Kobo Plus can benefit you and your book. So that's really interesting. I'm glad that Kobo made it so that we can participate in the Plus program here. And it will be very interesting to see how many people take their book off of Kindle Unlimited to take advantage. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. The word of the week, comparables. Uh, I mentioned comparables or comp titles earlier in, when we talked about elevator pitches, but a comparable is when authors compare their books to other titles and they often use the term comparable or comp title. A comparable book is one that is similar in theme genre, style, or target audience to the book the author is currently working on. Comparing a book to its comparables is an essential part of the publishing process as it helps literary agents and publishers understand the book's market potential, but it can also be used in the book's marketing to readers as well. When an author pitches a book to an agent or publisher, they often include a list of comp titles. These titles help the agent or publisher understand the book's potential readership and where it might fit in the marketplace and within their imprint. 
Comp titles also give agents and publishers a sense of the competition and how the author's book differs from other books in the same category. When choosing comp titles, authors should look for books that are similar in genre, style, and theme to their own work. For example, if an author is writing a young dystopian novel, they might compare their book to titles like The Hunger Games or Divergent. An author writing a memoir about overcoming addiction they might compare their book to a title like A Million Little Pieces or The Glass Castle. It is important to note that comp titles should not be too popular or too obscure. Comparing a book to a bestseller like Harry Potter or The Da Vinci Code is not helpful because those books are just in a league of their own. Similarly, comparing a book to an obscure title that maybe only a handful of people have read or even heard of is not helpful because it doesn't give agents, publishers, or readers a sense of the book's market potential. So a comparable book is similar in theme, genre, style, or target audience to the book the author is currently working on. Choosing a, an appropriate comp title is an important part of the publishing process and it helps agents and publishers understand the book's book market potential and where it fits in the marketplace. When choosing a comp title, authors should look for books that are like their own, but not too popular nor too obscure. And that is what a comp book is. And now it's time for my personal update. I have been plugging away at my new cozy mystery all week. I'm not quite on pace for the Camp Nano, but I'm sure I'll be able to catch up as my word count rises. Writing is an exercise, and as I write more, I'll be able to write more. I'm not ready to declare that this block I've had is over yet, but I can see it coming. It's amazing how much of a dopamine rush I get when I'm writing creative recreatively. Sure, creating it, this show is fun, but it's nonfiction. My true writer's heart will always be in fiction where I can amuse myself and tell myself a story. Yes, I actually write for myself first, and if others like it too, then that's great. I've also been getting myself ready for the Easter holiday. Uh, while my family is not religious, we do gather for ma major Christian holidays to celebrate as a family. It's been an interesting balance of the prep work because I do really want I don't really want to do anything extra the day of. When this show airs on Sunday, I plan to enjoy the company of my family and relax with them and just throw everything in the oven when it's time. Uh, coming up in two weeks is an author event that I'll be exhibiting and presenting at. I love love, love, love book fairs and author events to meet fellow authors and also just to find new books to read. One of my goals this year is to find more of them within a reasonable distance for my home. I'll be presenting on the basics of book marketing, a very elusive topic for almost every author. And it's an outside event, so I really hope the weather is nice. It's going to be mid-late April, which is in this area. We could still get snow. <laughs> uh, so I'm hoping that it's going to just be a lovely sunny day and uh, not 90 degrees or 30 degrees. But I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I have almost the whole booth set up. I just need to find a tent and uh, figure out what snacks I'm going to bring. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to a very productive week of writing this week. Uh, I have a bunch of seminars I'm taking as well, so it should be a very, very productive week for me uh, in the next week. So I hope everyone is having a wonderful week and getting some writing done. Uh, next week's show, ironically, is going to be on Writer's Block and how to destroy it. So everyone have a fabulous week, and I'll see you next time. This was The Author's Lighthouse, a Fireball Studio production. Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The Author's Lighthouse. And if you like the show, 
leave us, leave us a five-star review on your podcast platform. It really helps get the show discovered. And also don't forget to subscribe. If you have a topic you would like to suggest for a future episode, email it to karen at theauthorslighthouse.com. If you liked this episode and want to hear more, please support the show at patreon.com slash authors lighthouse. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash authors lighthouse. Every bit helps support the show. This was the Authors Lighthouse, a Fireball Studio production. Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram at the Authors Lighthouse and on Twitter at Authors LH. And if you like the show, subscribe and leave us five star review on your favorite podcast platform. It really helps get the show discovered. If you have a topic you would like to suggest for a future episode, email it to Karen at the authors lighthouse.com. That's K A R E N at the authors lighthouse.com. And if you really like this story and want to help more, please support the show at patreon.com slash authors lighthouse. That's P A T R E O N dot com slash authors lighthouse. Every little bit helps support the show. And thank you.